Uh, just for me to know who knows us. Who knows Ravana here? One guy, yeah. That's pretty much, uh, or two, yeah. That's pretty much, uh, we're pretty much the best kept known secret here um, at AWE. So for people who, who don't know us, we, we, was best in, uh, we won Best in Show uh, according to Tom's Hardware this year at CES. Um, if there's any entrepreneur here in the room, I would say that we didn't have a boot. Uh, we just uh, went to the show. Um, we knew one of the editor of, of Tom's Hardware and heard great things about us. So we just went to, uh, uh, to have breakfast with him. He said, yeah, I have tons of meeting today, but we should definitely meet. Uh, he tried pretty much everything on, on the show floor. And at night, just like that, we texted. We met at the Winds Hotel uh, in the hallway, um, gave him a demo. And two days later, to our biggest surprise, said, well, it was the best thing I've seen this year at CES. So that was, that was awesome for, for us. Uh, but it just shows you it's not how much money you spent on a boot or whatever. If you have something great, uh, people uh, will recognize it. So are we different? Why did we, why did we win Best in Show? It's because uh, we have a unique headset that blends AR and VR. So uh, on the VR side, we have the IS resolution panel available. So we have 1440p, 120 degrees field of view. Uh, and I don't know if you can see it well, but we have four four front-facing cameras uh, on the front, uh, very low latency cameras. Uh, so we have two infrared for inside-out positional tracking and end gesture. Um, and we have two uh, RGB cameras that are very helpful for augmented reality and at the same amazing 120 degrees. So if you're used to HoloLens or other headset, uh, you will really uh, appreciate our, our wide field of view. Uh, and then, because of that, we had the privilege uh, to go see, see Valve. Um, they were interested in seeing our progress, so we went to see them. They were uh, also super impressed. And then they talked about us, uh, about the OpenXR uh, initiative. Um, so it's, it's done by Kronos Group, uh, the, who, who do OpenGL. So they, they're trying to build a standard uh, interface for any content to, to be made. Um, and then we like Open XR because, uh, as you know, XR stands for e extended reality. Uh, and then um, extended reality means you can do both AR and VR. Um, some people call it mixed reality. But to be frank, now Microsoft saying VR headset or mixed reality headset. So I think it's pretty good that we use XR and it's not Open MR. Uh, and as you can see here, uh, there were no uh, place for AR. So um, Valve encouraged us to uh, get involved and um, because we learned a lot of things creating content on our device since we're kind of pioneer in blending AR and VR. Uh, we um, we, we kind of know the best practices, what works, what doesn't work. So I think that we will definitely get involved into that uh, standard to add the AR portion of it. So here are a few lesson learns that, that we got. So when we started to do content, um, of course, there's a lot of VR content out there, uh, AR less and less. So we said, let's do a cool experience where you can do both AR and VR. So after a bit of uh, uh, debating, we said, oh, it would be cool to fly a drone. So we did a, an helicopter demo where you can fly it uh, with uh, Xbox controller, so uh, I encourage you to come to your boot uh, at 6.45. Uh, uh, you can experience it for yourself. So as everything, you know, you start with something simple. Uh, so we had a, a, a chopper, and then we went from AR here to VR. So let's see if that works. If I, oh, no. So let's go back. Can you hit play, please? So here, that's a simple fade to black. So as you can see, uh, it really kills the immersion because um, we said, OK, we have the camera feed, and then we go to VR. But we, there were, we didn't have any alpha channels. So we, can, we couldn't blend uh, from, from uh, uh, AR to VR. So um, we went back to the drawing board and said, so OK. We're already, because we're using the IS resolution panels available. So we're already super uh, 
uh, at the top of our bandwidth. So how can we add um, an alpha layer uh, without compromising performance? So after a lot of tinkering, we were able to add an alpha channel uh, in a clever way that enabled us to kind of, so you have a pixel that comes from the camera feed and a pixel that comes from, from the host for the, 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 the CG. So we can say how much of one of the other we want. So we were able to blend it. So could you please uh, push play? So now you see uh, it's a much smoother transition. So we, we really start with uh, the AR feed, and then we kind of gradually bring it back into VR. And what's really powerful is when you have an anchor point. So here the anchor point is, is, is the helicopter. So that will stay always uh, fully, uh, fully um, opaque. You know, there's no transparency on, on that object. So um, that when people try try a demo, that's like everybody has something favorite. But a lot of people they like, oh, I really like how you do your transition between AR and VR. So that's one of the thing we we found out. And then if we go to the next slide, so. Um, Another thing that we found out is that the lighting is very important. So uh, this is, um, you can uh, start it, please. So this is a standard sky dome uh, blend in, uh, um, in Unity. So you see there's minimal reflection. Uh, but um, we found out that if we add a, a pattern, um, Based on so most of our demo we do it in convention centers so there's a lot of lighting upstairs so what we did is we took a 360 photo texture uh, with lots of reflection that coming that that comes from ab above and then we we use it as a sky dome in Unity and it really uh, made it much more uh, immersive uh, like that and much more realistic so that was uh, the second thing we found while doing your demo is that the lighting is very important. And then um, the other thing is, uh, I, as you can see with other AR device, is that um, most of them, don't, they don't support real-time occlusion. So um, if you have a virtual object, you put your hand in front, the object will stay there. And uh, it's like that for any device I've tried. Uh, since we have infrared cameras and uh, infrared illumination, it's, it's easy for us to do a, uh, a hand mask or near, near object mask. Of, so if you put your, your hand, we can detect that it's in front of the, of the chopper and you see if we put it behind or in front, it will detect. So first time it's disabled, you see it, it doesn't do nothing. And uh, second time we enable the, the occlusion uh, with the depth map and you see that uh, it will uh, know if it should be in front or behind the shop. So uh, you might see in, in VR show a lot of people to to show what people in VR they see. They put you in front of a green screen and then you can kind of uh, have a way to know what they're doing. Uh, well with, with the totem we have uh, on board so a lot, of, a lot of magic happens because we do that this in hardware in the headset. Um, and we do that for AR2. So you can be in a green room. Uh, multiple people here, is, as you can see, like will wear a backpack. Um, so like for location-based entertainment, things like that, uh, it's, it's really convincing because you can see your friend. Let's say you're two people. So you would, you would see the other. And then uh, you can then be transported into a virtual world. Um, so. Uh, that's another way to really add presence and uh, shared experience is to, to use green screens. How am I on time? Okay. Um, so a little recap. Uh, what creates presence is first thing, lighting is very important. Uh, consistent shadows. So really simple things like we forgot one time to put a shadow and like your brain intuitively knows it. So. It's really important to take into account good shadows. Um, white balance, so, okay. White balance might not be that important if you're in a projection-based AR device like HoloLens, Meta, Daikri, all of them. 
uh, because you see the world with your uh, real eyes. But most, most of those devices, you know, they have a semi-transparent surface that may be tinted so that you see the virtual object better. With our solution, um, everything is more uniform. So you, yeah, you see the real world through a camera, so the real world is a bit pixelated. But you know, Moore's Law will take care of this. Right now, we use 1.5K panels. The 2K panels are, are being launched uh, this year, so the screen door effect will disappear. Like cameras are getting better and better with HDR and things like that. So I think that in, in a few years, uh, I think Jesse Shell said that yesterday in his talk, you know, uh, camera-based AR will definitely win in the long run. Um, so white balance is really important uh, in, that, in that sense. And what's great about camera-based AR is that you can create opacity, that what your brain see through the cameras is uh, consistent. So like the CG, and the real world, they all make sense. So your brain, even though it's not as, as good looking as the real world, it, it will buy into thinking it's real. Um, so I really, as I said, come to our booth, 645, you really experience what presence in AR is. And then finally, um, that's a bit our Unity integration. So some of our customers, they ask us, how, how does it really work? So if you look, on the left, that's all hardware-based, and on the right, it's OS-based. So in, or, in order to do good uh, camera-based AR, you need super fast, low-latency uh, pass-through. So that's what we do. So we take the camera feed, and then we do all the, the distortion from the camera lens and the display lens, all in real time. And we send as, as fast as possible to the screens and to your eyes. So right now, we're at 14 millisecond delay. The reason we're at 14 milliseconds is because we need to do rotation. So we have a, a, a portrait panel, landscape camera, so we need to rotate it. But the good news is we're switching to landscape panel, and that goes on at 3 milliseconds. So we have an internal prototype uh, that goes at 3 milliseconds, so it will get better and better. And then that camera feed also is sent through the host, and we have a plugin, of course, to interact with Unity. Then Unity will render the scene with uh, Eden Area Mesh for better performance. Then we'll take her into the distortion per color, like pretty standard. And then the merge will happen in hardware. So that's another important aspect is that if you want low latency, it needs to be uh, in hardware. So oh, I think I have one, one minute left. So any questions? Units? Yeah, at her boot. I don't have it here. Huh? You didn't bring one here. Yeah, I should have. <laughs> well, you know, it's the picture is there. You know, we're running demos. Uh, I was preferring to, to do demos and while people, but uh, as I said, we're close to the networking area uh, on the show floor. It's open until three, so get your ass there. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>